In this video, I'm going to show how to configure session authentication. In this case, I've already configured a source and it's not using session at the moment. So we're going to go through and change it so that it creates a session, uses some session variables, and then cleans up the session afterwards. The first thing is you'll be going through most likely creating the source for the first time and you'll need to set this uh, session um, authentication to yes. And this is going to go ahead and create our session steps so we can set up in the design how to create and use those sessions. So the next step is to define which request against the target API is going to be used first to authenticate and create a session. In this API, uh, session is the past path to do this. We could also update the method if that was for some reason not a post call. In this case, it is. And then the next step is to set any appropriate headers that we need to set in order to make this um, uh, session work. So often when you're creating those, there's still some kind of login uh, call that we need to make. And this one we're posting to session and we need to use authorization basic um, with the username and password in the base64. So this is still using uh, basic auth credentials, but then it's going to create a session for us. So this is all we need for this one. But if there was things we need to change, we could do that for the session request here. And then we're going to test that uh, the reference environment authentication and session requests are all set up correctly to go ahead and create that session. And we can see that that information that comes back is correct. Um, and now the next step is going to be reviewing the information that comes back and selecting the fields that we want to retain during the collection um, during a, a normal management pack collection. So we have the options of choosing anything from the header that's come back as well as the body. For this API, we want the ID field as well as the token field. And one thing you'll have to do is um, copy these usages so that you can use them in later steps. Um, you'll most likely copy and because there's multiple, you might have to jump back to this step but the previous steps uh, when you go through them will retain their sort of settings. So in this case, I'm gonna take the token one and this is next going to be this global request settings. If you've gone through the video of setting up source, you'll remember this step is to set all of the headers we wanna use for the data requests. So since we've set this up as session authentication, the basic auth header was applied to the get session request in step three, but we no longer have it for global request settings uh, because we're going to be using a session. So we need to set what the header is and how we're going to use that token uh, to do this. So in this case, we're going to add an authorization header with bearer, and then I'm putting in the uh, token. So this field will be replaced with the actual value during the running, but it's important to use the um, replacement field and not the example value of the token because um, that won't work when you're actually running requests later on or when you install this on an actual ARIA operation system. And then the last step is to define a release uh, session. How do you give back the session? If there is documentation on how to do this, you'll want to set that up because um, if you're running collections over time, you don't want to cause some kind of a session leak that could make the target API unavailable and worse yet, make the, the application itself unavailable. So in this case, we're going to set this to yes. And um, the documentation for this API has this under uh, session. And then you would use, uh, you can use in this case, actually session me if you didn't want to put in the, um, use the variable of the session ID, but we can do that or we can specify um, session ID that we stored in, in step six. And so in this case, I'm gonna use both variables. And if we need to override any or add any specific headers or, or advanced options for this release request, we can do that. We don't have any to do in this case. And then we validate that this is gonna run. And the way this particular process works is 
when we run this request, we can see in the log here, it's actually going to create the session from step three, use the variables together, and then uh, uh, call the delete request. So it doesn't use the, uh, the session when we first create it. It doesn't retain that in the application through this wizard. It's going to, anytime you click this request, go and create a new one um, and make sure to use it so it can clean it up. And then continuing onwards, everything else about setting up the source is going to be the same as in the other video. So uh, you're going to set up your def your specific test request that will be used in the adapter instance as well to validate the connection. And we can run this request to make sure that everything still works the way that we expect. It looks like we have all the response the way we expect. And if we were to look through the log, we can see that we are getting the session. And then later on, we are running the request with the authorization bearer token, and then finally running the um, cleanup request on the session with its particular ID. So everything looks to be set up the way we expect here. And overall, that's how you can configure session authentication for your design.